All right, welcome back to another episode of our Guild One playthrough. This is a special episode because we are in Fort Aspenwood, which is obviously back in factions. Um, finally, after lots of invitations from other Guild Wars 1 players, especially other content creators, namely Guild Wars 1 in 2024. If you're not following his channel, I'm going to leave, leave a link in the description. So be sure to check him out. He does a lot of videos, but he also specializes in putting out a lot of content of his games in Fort Aspenwood. Uh, he was currently playing at the same time when I logged in uh, this morning. And it took us a couple games to get into a match together. You kind of just sit here in, in the outpost and you're not allowed to team up. I was kind of surprised. I thought you could have a pre-made team going in. So it's basically like a random arenas kind of thing, but it's eight on eight. And I learned there's three lanes. There's like orange, purple, and green, I think. Orange and purple. I can only see two here. Uh, it looks like, I think there's three lanes. Anyway, it's eight on eight and your one team is attacking. The other team is defending and this is, as you will see in the playthrough, this is my first time playing this. And if I had played it in the past, I certainly don't remember uh, anything about it. So I'm kind of a fish out of water here. I went into these games being a little bit, uh, feeling a little bit uncomfortable. Because as you know, if you've watched my channel before, you know I'm a PvE player. Long, long time casual P PvE Guilders 1 player and thrown into PvP was just a totally different experience for me. Um, I checked the wiki, so I got this power block build. Even though I'm not good at interrupts, I went ahead and tried it because I was, I was thinking I was going to annoy some of the healer enemies. Mm, you're going to find out. Uh, <laughs> you're going to see the games that I lose and win. Uh, I'm editing through some of them, as you'll see. Uh, there are some cuts in the in these games. The games are pretty short. I think each game takes about ten to like maybe max twelve minutes or something. Uh, and yeah, I got in about three three matches this morning. Um, this I I learned that the Fort Aspenwood is playing every weekend. And in my time, it's in the morning, so it makes it pretty difficult for me to catch. Actually, uh, however, Monday morning for me, which is like Sunday night in the States, seems to be working out. So I'm hoping to catch this next week. Anyway, I want to try and give some commentary over this game, this match. Uh, I thought I was doing pretty well, like we were pushing forward. I didn't notice in the top left that's a timer. So as an attacking team, you want to try and defeat... Uh, Gunther, I think is his name, before the time runs out. So here I was thinking, all right, we're 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 pushing up. We're doing well. I'm like seeing enemies go down. I'm spamming my skills and removing enchantments. Not really getting any good interrupts, but hopefully I was annoying the team. Uh, I noticed my teammates pinging some enemies, so I was trying to follow their pings. Yeah, I was just not able to really get any interrupts, so I, I kind of defaulted to using Diversion and Signet of Humility in lieu of landing those interrupts, because that was just not working out. I noticed Chaos Storm is a pretty good skill, because even though they're players, they would often sit for a couple seconds, if not more, in the Chaos Storm. Plus, the NPCs obviously are not really good at avoiding aoe so chaos storm turned out to be pretty good uh, in this game even though we do as you can probably guess as the timer is running off we do end up losing this first match um i i can't really say if my team was good or bad it does i did learn later on that the luxon has a significant disadvantage it seems at the end of the games, um, I was actually talking to a veteran player who was very nice, by the way. Veteran players, I think, uh, I think are nice once they find out that you're a new player because 
they tend to be very surprised. I mean, I'm not technically a new player, but I, I'm new to to uh, Fort Aspenwood, and I got a lot of tips actually. If you can, if you can like have some thick skin and know that these players have been playing this game for years and years, and they're just not used to seeing clueless players running around. Um, you can you can kind of I I don't know why I'm running up so far ahead. <laughs> Looking back at this game, I could see I'm so far ahead of my team. Luckily, I got back out alive. I'm seeing I saw a lot of similar builds like Starburst, seems to be a pretty standard build for elementalists here. Uh, Assassins, that warrior that blue warrior Hector. He was running like uh, a ra warrior ranger, and he was just basically unkillable. He was running that Melandru's elite skill. Um, so yeah, not a good first game. Second game, I think, goes even worse. Uh, yeah, so I was trying to message Guild Wars 1 in 2024, trying to get in the same match. We we kept seeing each other in the outpost, but for some reason, we, we couldn't get into the same game. So we were like... We were like just missing each other every time. Typically, you get into games pretty quickly in Fort Aspen World. It's if you miss if you miss the queue, uh, you you basically have to wait just about ten minutes, and you're you're gonna get into the next one, as long as you don't like cancel the queue too often. Yeah. So this match, I changed up my build. Uh, again, I consulted the wiki, and I wanted to focus more on the chaos storms because I was seeing some good numbers with that. I put in Wastrel's Worry because I was thinking players were like me and not spamming skills. And it, I got a lot of uh, criticism from my teammates for running Wastrel's Worry. So I, I get rid of it after this game. See, first death so fast. <laughs> I die a lot in this match. Um, but yeah, I, I saw a lot of success with the Chaos Storm. So I was going to be trying to spam that. I like the Diversion. But the problem that I ran into this match because with these two, there's an elementalist and a me and a assassin. They they were hanging back and just spawn camping. So like once you die, you have to run back to your team. And I got caught here. Here's again this this vexing that no vaccine daggers. <laughs> That's a funny name. Vaccine daggers just kept catching me running back to my team, and he killed me so many times. And earth gazing, this earth gazing elementalist i just see look that t that player just even messaged me oh he's on my team yeah he noticed he noticed my i was struggling so he met he just commented you need a build and at first i got a little bit offended and then i was just realizing yeah i'm just gonna go ahead and tell them it's my first time and hopefully they show some you know consideration which i feel like they did I think a big part of playing PvP in these games is not reading too much into negativity. Giving players a benefit of the doubt, like, like, don't read texts with a defensive mindset, just like, okay, this person's trying to help me. See, there's some good Chaos Storm numbers right there. I learned that this Kurzik Juggernaut is important to take out. But yeah, match two was way worse than match one. We just got destroyed. That... That uh, assassin was really a pain. Luckily, this time I met up with um, Healers One in 2024. He's playing. He switched over to a monk. So we get in the same queue together. And this match you're gonna see goes a lot better. Spoilers a little bit. The other thing you got, I got like you got to keep in mind. I'm a PVE character. And I don't have runes set. I don't have like good. I don't have a max weapon. My weapon is not great. My runes are not great. Um, the play, the enemy players or my teammates don't know that. But <laughs> I was, I was a huge liability to them, for sure. But being a mesmer, I think, I think is probably gives me ability to get away with that because Mesmer is just still so strong. I went with a similar build. So I went with uh, Signet of... Uh, what is it? No, Glyph of Renewal. 
and I'm just going to use it to spam Chaos Storm and Empathy. But I also find some good use out of it if I was running out low on health. I could use it to spam Ether Feast, which came in handy. You're also going to see Guild Wars 1 and 2024's uh, monk skills, healing skills. Some serious close calls that, uh, yeah, he kept me alive. So the enemy team had this Beastmaster pa Ranger Paragon that was just chucking spears and and going after the backline with his pet. Luckily, I kind of abused um, empathy on them. And they also had a Minion Master. So they had a lot of just NPC teammates that made it really difficult. They, they would just swarm us. Honestly, I this whole match, this third match, I thought we were losing really badly. So you can kind of see, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just casting Empathy. I figured, I don't know if it, like, typically you, I think you want to ignore the pet. But casting Empathy on the pet, I thought was a pretty good idea. Because you can just kind of set and forget. And the pet is just going to keep attacking because it's kind of stupid. Chaos Storm on the NPCs puts out really good damage there. It looks like every match I just went orange. So I don't even know what the other, what the other route is like going purple. I should play. Next time I play, I should check out purple yeah I'm trying to follow the pings I'm keeping an eye on their enemy team but I also know we should be moving up so I'm looking forward here even though it feels like I felt really unsafe in this position because if you look at the mini map we're getting attacked on both sides now so again I this whole time I was thinking like we're losing see I got a lot of I got a lot of for that what I just did I cast empathy on the minion I got a lot of hate for that later on. <laughs> so I learned. Don't cast empathy on the NPCs. But yeah, somehow we keep moving up. This was my favorite position to be in, actually. Because I get swarmed by all their melees. But because they're all NPCs, I can just drop a couple Chaos Storms at my feet. And they either have to stay in it and die or run away and stop attacking. So I thought that was a pretty good play. They keep repairing this gate. I'm not really sure how they do that, but the gate keeps going back up and we have to keep knocking it back down. I don't even know how we're knocking the gate down, to be honest, but... I'm starting to feel like... Okay, are we just going to be stuck here all game? See, I was casting Chaos Storm there to try and zone them, and I think that was probably not a good idea. I should have just I should have just been spamming empathy on them. I'm not even really sure how the enemy keeps coming up behind us. Like are they spawning behind us or are they just running behind us? Either way, we start moving up. And it takes me a while to realize why is this why is this ranger not dying? And I, I realize there's a monk up on the ridge there that's healing him like crazy. I, I notice him here. I try and drop a diversion or chaos storms on him. What do I do? Yeah, I try to get diversion, get interrupted, of course. Glyphor Renewal was really fun. I think I'm going to try this build in PvE, actually. Glyphor Renewal is in some ways better than Echo because it's faster. And you can, like, the recharge rate on it is really fast. Synergizes with pretty much any, any uh, fast casting. Or any uh, any mesmer skill that normally has a high cooldown, 
synergizes really well with it. And with Echo, you're kind of locked into that combo once you use Echo to clone a skill. With Glyph of Renewal, you can just double cast. If It almost feels like you're double casting all of your spells, so it's pretty good. I do die. I think I die this one time. Um, luckily, our team regroups really quickly. Annoying nuisance living up to his name. It was even, it was even annoying that he misspelled nuisance. So went went ahead and quickly deleted him. <laughs> and yeah, at this point, I kind of realized, okay, I guess I guess we are winning because we are almost into their base, and we still have over halfway left to go. There's that same assassin that was vaccine daggers that was messing us up last game. This time I had empathy for him. I found Diversion to be really good against that Elementalist um, Starburster. Because the whole point of Starburst is to spam it. But once you cast Diversion, diversion on him, he can no longer spam his skills. So I feel like that was a good play. And that, that assassin's running Frenzy, so if I put Empathy on him, he, he's forced to retreat because he, he'll be taking like 82 damage per attack. And he'll just be deleting himself at that point. So any chance I got, I would try to put Empathy on him. And it, it just would immediately take him out of the game. And since he's kind of alone, he's very separated from his team, there was no one to remove the Hex off of him, so... That was a pretty good way to just totally disable him with one skill. See, he took 82 damage there because he attacked with he attacked with frenzy and empathy on him. Then he gets mad at me. He starts coming after me. Oh no, he doesn't. Okay. I'm always, I th I thought I, I my main my main uh, strategy was to prioritize taking off enchantments um, and spamming uh empathy on melee and chaos storm on npcs that was kind of my game plan even though i kept looking for cry of frustration i never got a single interrupt off so i'm probably going to be taking that off my skill bar here i just get swarmed with the minion master but i'm kind of happy to take this aggro because i dropped down two chaos storms right here and then this feels like a farming build almost because, yeah, it just totally wipes out all of the minions. Even even the assassin there tried to jump in and take me out, but he just took like 400 damage right there. That was probably, of the three games, that was my play, my best play right there. Kind of patting myself on the back, but... Again, this is my first time, so I'm sure I'm doing a lot of things wrong. So we're about a uh, little over 70% of the way through this match. And it feels like there's no way we can win because they just closed the gate back up. We still haven't reached Gunther. And there's... They're stalling quite a bit. They finally turned their um, attention to me. See, if you look at our team's health bars, the healing on our team was really quite good. We had two monks. Doing a good job keeping everyone alive. So we finally push into their base, and then someone pinged Architect Gunther. So I just ran in and tried to cast... I cast two uh, double Chaos Storm, so you can see him taking a bunch of damage there. And I Unfortunately, I die, but right there he just took a huge burst of damage. And before I can make it back to the team, he's been killed. 
Oh no, that was Radic. I think I think we do win before I can run back. This annoying nuisance is still hanging back, so I bet his team was pretty annoyed at him for not being there to assist. And we do get the W. I was very surprised. After the match, uh, I talked a little bit with some players. Uh, some of the players, like one of the players runs up to me and says, what the heck were you doing? And even though, yeah, I kind of got a little offended. I uh, reminded them that I was my, it was my first time and some other players jumped in and gave me a lot of tips. So anyway, if you liked this kind of content, be sure to like and subscribe. I am going to try and keep coming back uh, to do these PvP Fort Aspenwoods at least hopefully once a week uh next uh, a week from now uh, i'm hoping to do that it's a lot of fun if you're new to guild wars i think it's still a pretty good community to get into um and if you're coming back to guild wars it's kind of cool to see that there's still an active community at least at these specific times so pretty fun